everyone, welcome back to my channel. Long time no see. I can't believe how long it feels since I filmed a YouTube video. So thank you for bearing with me. Obviously we had the wedding, we went away on our mini moon and we've been enjoying some time just getting the house together and sorting things out. So thank you very much for bearing with me on the videos. Today I am just going for a really casual vlog style video and you'll have seen from the title that I'm going to be working on a little baby make for baby crafty pie and I'm going to be doing a Liberty patchwork quilt. The idea behind this is that I can have it as a play mat, just put it down, you know, in the living room and baby can go on it. I don't really know what I'm doing when it comes to quilting. I'm definitely a quilting newbie. Um, I've got my bits together and I'm just going to have some fun sewing and take you along the process with me. Also disclaimer, it is extremely hot today. I have my fan behind me. I've had to turn that off just for filming this intro. You've seen me in this dress before guys. The glamour is gone. Uh, there's barely anything that fits me anymore being this pregnant. So this is, I think the same dress I wore in my last video which is slightly cringy. It's from H&M. It's not um, maternity, it's just normal. Bought it a couple months ago, so it may still be on the website if you like it. So before I get started on the quilt, I just wanted to show you the fabrics that I have. These have really, really kindly been sent to me by Alice Caroline Fabrics. They're my absolute go-to for Liberty Fabrics. The range they have is incredible. So they actually sent me, they let, well, they let me choose um, some fat quarters that we're gonna be working with today. Now for the quilt, I wanted to keep it quite neutral, but still add a bit of color in there so that it, you know, doesn't stand out too much if we do have it downstairs. So I've gone for a sort of like, blues, whites, yellows, that kind of thing. So I have a few of these prints here. So I have it in the navy. I absolutely love this. I kind of want to make myself something in this uh, print. Then I have it in the navy with whites, the sort of turquoisey blue, it's a muted one. And then also this gorgeous minty color. So they, oh gosh, I'm dropping them now. So they are all the same lovely print there, which I thought would be nice to tie in together. And then I also have these two here, which I think is like the cherry blossom print. Um, I've actually had this before in pink and red and navy, which I love. So I went for the yellow, well, sort of mustard, and then the greys and blues. And then from their newer collection, I got um, this Betsy, which oh, I just love so much. And then another one with a bit more yellow in. So I just thought all of these together are nice and colorful, but still quite neutral. And then I'm actually gonna back it in the Betsy because you know me, I'm a Betsy gal. I'm just gonna go ahead and get started cutting out. I think I'm gonna do six by six inch squares, but I'm gonna measure them out and see what they look like and if I want to go bigger or smaller. I'm gonna put Married at First Sight on the TV <laughs> and do a little time lapse of me doing this. Married at First Sight Australia. Let me know if you've watched it. I'm on the latest season, I'm quite far to the end, but I just love the drama. I'm loving it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start cutting out, but I first wanted to show you the bits that I'm using. So I finally have a chance to use some of my gorgeous hemline gold quilting bits. I have other things that I'm going to be using throughout the process, but just for now, I've got my self-healing mat. I mean, look at how gorgeous it is with the black and gold. I've also got my nice big ruler here. And then I've got my rotary cutter with the gold blaze. And then I did bring down, where's my fabrics? I did bring down my Pilot Friction Pen, which I've spoken about before, um, just in case I want to draw lines on and cut. But I'm kind of just gonna figure it out as I go along, I think, and see what works best for me. So let's get into some cutting. <laughs> Quick 
quick update um apologies for the fan noise but i'm literally too hot without it i have cut out some squares now so i've actually got 44 here um i got roughly like six squares out of each but i've still actually got loads of fabric left but what i'm gonna do before i cut any more out is just lay these out on the floor and see what of sat what sort of size i'm looking at and then go from there so i'm gonna go do that now and then i will show you what it looks like so you're gonna have to excuse the really annoying lighting um i'm sorry but the sun is coming through the skylight but i've just put together all of the pieces and i think i'm happy with this so i'm not you know doing a standard size i don't really know if this is standard size but i've literally just gone for one two three four five six along and then yeah seven up i cut out each of my pieces in six by six squares and i just think this is a nice size like i can put it outside i can put it on the sofa so yeah i'm gonna start sewing these together i think usually i would be up in my sewing room obviously but i've actually brought my machine downstairs today because it is like tropical temperatures in there <laughs> so i'm just trying to stay cool down here so i've just set up on the table um i've got some navy thread because i'm thinking obviously i've got a mixture of like white based fabrics and like the the darker blues but i think the the blue might be nice a bit of a contrast so that's what i'm going to go for so i'm just going to thread up my machine and then i'm going to start sewing together my bits well, I have mentioned before on my videos, but I am a huge true crime fan. So whilst I've been cutting out, I didn't go for married at first sight in the end. Um, I actually put on Crime Junkie, which is my absolute favourite true crime podcast. I could listen to it all day long. So that is what I will be listening to as I sew together these as well. All set up, ready to go now. I've just grabbed my first row of patches and I've also still got my um, mat here. Just before I sew them together, I'm gonna place each of my patches back onto my mat and just double check that I've been super accurate in cutting them out because I think some are definitely better than others. So I might just chop off some extra bits if I find them along the way. one so I'm just gonna take off this excess here well, I've sewn my first row overall we're looking good um there's a couple that are slightly out of line yeah this one was as well so i think i'm just going to sew them all together and then even them out slightly it just shows you how accurate you need to be with the cutting stage but i'm happy with all of these so i'm going to put this one to the side and grab my next pile <laughs> sewn all of my rows together so i'm going to take these upstairs now and press all of these seams to one side and then it'll be time to sew these seams it's starting to come together i love it and now I'm gonna do the same thing as before, but this time I'm sewing the long seams. This might be a bit trickier because I've got to try and line up all the seam lines now. So this is the bit that we'll find out if my measuring was really wonky or not. Um, but fingers crossed, it's not too bad. say not too shabby 
Oh, that one's a tiny bit out, look. But I'll let myself off because the rest of those are looking good. Here we go. Oh my word. I am just so happy with it. I think it looks so nice. I love the placement of all the different prints and colors. <sighs> what a satisfying project. So I've probably been doing this for about, what time is that? I don't even know what time it is. Maybe two and a half ish hours this took me. So I'm gonna have a bit of a break now because it is quite hot and I'm fairly tired and my friend is coming around for a bit later. So I think I might just have a little break and then potentially come back to it this evening. So I will check in when I am on to the next step, which will be to do the quilting and do the binding around the edge. Exciting. Good morning everyone. New day, it is now the next day. I didn't end up doing anything last night um, because I was sat chatting with my friend for ages. So I'm gonna carry on with the quilt this morning. It's another super hot day. So I'm just gonna get done what I can. Oh, Roger wants to say hello. It wouldn't be a vlog without a visit from Rog, would it? It wouldn't. You've gotta say hello. Say hello. He's so hot already, bless him. So you have seen in the previous clip that I have started to put together the pieces of the quilt. So I have it here. I'll try and be really careful with it. What I did was I sandwiched together my pieces. So I've got my backing, my wadding, and then my front quilt piece. And I've just tried to line that up as best as possible and hold it together with a few safety pins. I've previously used, when I did my quilted jacket, um, oh, I can't remember the brand now. It was fairly expensive and really good quality, mainly cotton wadding. I think that was about 30 pounds for the bag. And I just thought I want to keep in a nice budget for this project. So I actually found a big bag of wadding on eBay for, I think it was about 9.99, but it is all polyester. Now it came and it was a lot thinner than I was expecting. So I've actually gone for two layers of that. I don't know if that's what you're supposed to do but I'm gonna do it and I hope it works. I've got my machine set up here again. I'm going to get started actually doing the quilting. So I'm gonna follow the line of the seams that I already have in my navy blue thread and sew up those. Now, something that I absolutely love about this machine. So I have the Passport 3.0 and it has a built-in walking foot. So I've already pulled it down, but just to show you, you just pull it down, it clips onto the back of the normal foot and it makes it into a walking foot, which is so handy for quilting, obviously. And then you can also just decrease the pressure on the presser foot, which gives you a bit more room under here as well, which is also a really handy feature. So I will be using both of those. <laughs> don't think there's anything more relaxing than sewing quilting lines. I absolutely love it. But I've just finished. Um, didn't take me long at all. When you get into it, it's so speedy. And it's looking so nice. Here it is. I am absolutely loving it. Looks so gorgeous. You can tell I'm not a professional quilter because <laughs> there's some that, like this one's a little bit puffier than others, but I'm gonna put it in a gentle wash as well. Um, and hopefully it will keep like a nice puffiness because I actually really like that. So 
really pleased with how this is looking. What I'm gonna do now is go grab my big scissors and chop the excess off all the way around the edge so I've got a nice even quilt. And then it's gonna be time for binding and I have a new gadget to use, which I've been waiting to use for ages and I can't wait to show it to you. Now this is where it gets super exciting. I have cut off all the excess of the quilt and now it's time to do the bias binding around the edge. Now in my head, I want to use all of my scraps left over because obviously Liberty is precious to make almost like a patchwork bias binding, but I have this to use. I'm so excited. Um, Simplicity have sent me their new bias tape maker. So it's basically a machine that I'm pretty sure you cut these strips and you feed it through the machine and it makes it into bias binding. Because obviously when you're making your own, it can be quite a lengthy process to press all the edges, make sure it's even, mine is literally never even. So I can't wait to use this. I haven't even opened it yet. So I'm gonna open it now and read through the instructions just to check how wide I need my strips to be. And then we're gonna have a go. Guys, this looks so fancy. Excuse Roger barking in the background, but you get all these different um, heads to make different widths of bias binding, which is just so cool. And I think you interchange them here. And then this gets hot, so it's like an iron bit and it feeds it through. I mean, this looks very technical. I'm not very good at working things out, so I'm hoping I can read the instructions. First, I have to make the bias strips. So cut the strips of fabric on the bias two times the size of the tip you will be using. So for example, the one inch, one inch tip, you cut strips two inches wide. So I'm gonna do that first and then tackle the machine. I've cut out a whole load of strips and I've just started sewing them together to make sort of a whole different pattern for the binding. According to the video, we put the fabric through here and slot it on and then we wind it up. Okay, so I have all my fabric on here. Now I place it in the machine and take this off. I've just got my safety pin. Okay, fabric's going through. Now we take this off, we clip this in. Let's go over here. Oh, that's hot. Pull this through like so. Guys, it's working! It's making bias binding! Well, that was so much fun. Now I've got my quilt here and my bias binding and I am going to attach the bias binding to the front. So what I am gonna do here is get the end of my bias binding. I'm going to open out the binding and line up the edge of the binding with the quilt and sew a seam all the way along that fold line and then we'll be able to turn it out and fold it round to the other side. mitered corners which can seem tricky and actually the first time I did it was on the B. Um, I'd never done it before but actually they're not too bad so what you do is you sew down to almost near the edge and then you pivot to sew directly into the corner like so. We fold it back on 
it's 90 degree angle like so and then fold it back on itself and then just like before carry on stitching I'm just gonna sew down here and check that that's right let's just double check so I've not done a mitre in a while yes so when you turn it out it look like that close up of the binding I've sewn one side on so now it's just a case of pressing this and turning it over to the other side <laughs> everyone so it's a few days later now and I have finished my quilt so here it is I am absolutely in love with it it's just exactly what I wanted um so I took about three evenings to sit and do all of the hand stitching of the binding it was actually a lot quicker than I expected and very relaxing I will say that the one thing that I've loved the most about this entire project it's just how much of a relaxing, enjoyable experience it's been. I've not had to think too much about working out instructions or fitting things. It's just been pure sewing and with my favourite fabrics too. So I absolutely love it. I just wanted to say another huge thank you to Alice Caroline Fabrics for sending me these beautiful, beautiful fabrics. I'm really hoping to turn my scraps into other nursery bits as well. So definitely stay tuned for those. And also I do have a giveaway in the works with Alice Caroline Fabrics that I'm gonna be doing over on my Instagram. So if you're not following me, it's at the Crafty Pie. So make sure you follow me over there to see when I am giving away some gorgeous liberty. Once again, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, it would mean a lot if you could do that. And do let me know what you thought of the video. Obviously, it's a lot more casual. The house is not perfect. Um, I do not look perfect. But um, yeah, I just wanted to keep it real and take you along with me on this process. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.